What is up fellow Yu-Gi-Oh fans, I am the one and only Glen Gwynn, welcome to the channel. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today, something that I don't normally do on the channel because everything I upload is usually good content. But this is my girlfriend's first ever deck profile and she wanted me to showcase this for her. We sat in my room one night, we were going through some Yu-Gi-Oh cards and this is the most nostalgic old school deck that we could find to put together. It has no relevance to the meta so don't even bother trying to play this. Maybe back in the day this deck would have actually been quite good, maybe in 2001-2002 era. Especially like in the Duelist Kingdom area where we didn't even have to sacrifice our monsters. So as you can see in front of you, we have cards that don't even have sleeves because back in the day when I used to go to school, I never even had any sleeves. So we're going to go through this deck profile. There's 50 cards in the deck. We've gone for the old school, beautiful paper mat. Just like back in the day, I used to go to Toys R Us with my mum and I used to buy Starter Deck Jury, Starter Deck Yugi, Starter Deck Pegasus and Starter Deck Kaiba uh, boxes and these mats used to come in them. So without any further ado, let's get into this really weird, fun deck profile that my girlfriend actually put together. So obviously we have the boss himself from Starter Deck Yugi Dark Magician. Then we have Blue Eyes White Dragon from Starter Deck Kaiba. Uh, these are all her choices by the way, I did not pick any of these, I mean, <laughs> the deck just makes no sense, but it's just so funny, to, and I wanted to make the deck on it, and it's just hilarious to look at. And then we got Dark Magician Girl, I mean, these are all old school beautiful, and they're very, they're, you know, these are favourites, I mean, look how beautiful, it looks horror. I mean, this is not great to show you guys and girls, like, in the light like this. It, I mean, it's like touched by human hands and there's no sleeves on it. So there's the first three boss monsters. I'm going to have to be very careful with these cards. Some of them do have a bit of damage on it. Uh, these are some old cards. Uh, Summon Skull she's put in the deck. This is from a game called uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, so this is CRU. This is uh, Stairway to the Destined Doll CRU, which is her next boss monster. And last but not least for the boss monsters, she is playing an old school... Um, starter deck Merrick Lava Golem. I didn't even know I had this until I went through the old school cards. So we dug it out and we just thought, you know what, we're just going to throw it in the deck. So please do not take this deck profile seriously. It is really stupid, but it's also really fun for the channel at the same time, especially for the nostalgic fans that are out there. Then we have the Secret Rare Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. Um, I don't actually know where this is from. Are these from a, uh, a video game? A Duelist of the Roses, is that? I'm not actually too sure. If someone could hit me up in the comment section and let me know what uh, this set is. I think it is Duelist of Roses. And then it would not be complete without the other boss monster himself. This is um, WC4 Valkyrion. I don't actually know where WC4 is. I thought it was like a world championship card. Obviously it's not. Otherwise that would be hella expensive. And hopefully that's not fake. Then she's put uh, Time Wizard in her deck. And then we're going back in time. Definitely with Time Wizard. Uh, Kyber Man, which used to, uh, you could tribute him, and then you could special summon one blue eyes white dragon from your hand. So he's not actually, he's actually one of the newest cards, to be honest, in this deck. And obviously, it wouldn't be complete without Penguin Soldier, because I am Glenguin, penguins are my life, and I love Penguin Soldier. It's probably one of my favourite all-time cards. So I said, I said to her, you know what, Rachel, please, let's put Penguin Soldier into the deck, and it is starter deck Jerry Penguin Soldier, the original and the best. You'd flip it, and you would return up to two monsters on the field. Uh, to your opponent's hand. Really good card. This just made me laugh. Okay, so she, we were just laughing and she was just like, Glenn, and I was like, yes. She was like, that looks like me after I've eaten. So I was like, well, you love chicken and now we're going to put Niratori in your deck because it's a chicken and it looks like you've just eaten. So it's a really full up chicken. It's fat and she's not fat or whatsoever. Not that I have anything against fat people, but she does love the D, God damn it. Sorry, uh, I didn't mean it like that. That is Lord of D. That is the next best card. <laughs> and um, yeah, Lord of D obviously is Lord of Dragons, but obviously these this day and age with the adults that are playing Yu-Gi-Oh, I think we all kind of agree that that is uh, about something else. Uh, this is probably the best deck card in her deck. Um, Morphing Jar, obviously both players discard all their cards in their hands and draw five. So you don't even have to have a discard. You can just like literally draw five new cards off of this card. Really cool effect. Um, a really old school card which I personally wasn't even, I literally just threw it away but she was like oh, okay it looks like me looking over you because I'm an angel she was saying and I love you and she wants to, she wanted to cuddle me so basically that's me, that's her and uh, yeah Soul of Purity Light went into the deck, amazing. <laughs> then she likes all her fairies and all her, I mean this looks like a fairy to me but it's a warrior apparently, Princess of Surugi. 
I don't even know what it does. We're going to just go skipping past that because I have no idea. She was just saying that she was a princess and that's the only reason why she put it in the deck. Uh, we have Baby Dragon, obviously. This is one of the old school cards in the game. So, obviously, we were putting Baby Dragon in. Uh, a random Toon Alligator just went into the deck. She was like, I like that, so I'm putting that in. This is um, a banned Harpy Girl. Uh, the reason why it was banned, especially uh, in Japan, was because it does have a bit of cleavage showing. I'll just show you there. There's a bit of cleavage showing. So, they actually did cover that up, uh, especially in the new cards. That was in the same set as the Dark Magician Girl came in. Then we have a really good beat stick defender as in Mystical Elf. So back in the day, especially in the first ever Game Boy Color games or the first uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, simulator games, we used to just set this and pass turn. The only reason why we did it is because 2000 defense is actually quite a lot. And then we'd kind of tribute it for a 3000 defense like Millennium Shield or Labyrinth Wall. So if you guys and girls have any like special cards, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what your nostalgic cards are. I do want to hear what, you, uh, what decks you have still that are old school. Nothing quite like this. She just thought Dancing Fairy was really cute, even though there's three, so it should be Dancing Fairies. It doesn't actually have any relevance, but it is a 1700 attack, so back in the day, like I said, it was quite a lot. This isn't the original Karibo, I mean, it is a starter deck, um, Yugi Moto, I believe it's from. I don't have the original one, I don't have a secret rare one, unfortunately, but that is Karibo, everyone knows what it does. This is probably the newest deck in the whole entire card, Kuribon. Um, she just thought it was cute, so we thought we'd put it in. That is the Skyrim Karibo, basically. Uh, Gear 3, the Iron Knight. Actually, that was my choice. I really do like the look of the artwork. That is from the PSV set. Really cool card. Uh, she thought this looked like Aladdin, so we put Legin, the mystical genie of the lamp. It should just be uh, the genie uh, from Aladdin. Then we put Beaver Warrior in. And then last but not least for the monsters, we are playing Petite Dragon. Because it's the most broken card in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. A very small dragon known for its vicious attacks. Who would want to take that on, right? So that is all the monsters. Again, this is a 50 card deck, so that, <laughs> there is a lot of monsters. Um, going into the old school spells, obviously, Swords of Revealing Light was a classic back in the day. Obviously, back row removal, even, even to this day, from what, 2004-2005 era, Mystical Space Typhoon is still being played to this day. Same with Scapegoat. I know they've uh, knocked that down on the uh, Forbidden list, but Scapegoat, obviously, this is from Starter Deck Jury, and Scapegoat is a classic card. Polymerization is not an old school polymerization, unfortunately I don't own one, but it is for Valkyrian and the Magnet Warriors. If she was ever to play this deck, this deck would have to be played against a 10 to 11 year old child, because there is no way this deck is going to be able to do anything. But then again, when it comes to the trap cards, you'll see that your opponent can't actually do anything to us either, especially in this current meta. Uh, so then we have Dark Hole, obviously that would destroy all monsters on the field. We don't own an LOB Rageki, unfortunately, so we can't be playing that. Enemy controller, old school card, I do like that. And then I dug out Fissure, and I showed her Fissure, and even she knew what Fissure is. So Fissure is destroy one opponent's face-up monster with the lowest attack. It's a ma it says magic card on it, that's how old it is. Random card, sparks, inflict 200 damage to your opponent's life points, burn damage for days. Mystic Mind could even play that these days because it's that good of a card. Uh, we play D-Spell, uh, so basically back in the day you'd play this card, you would flip a card that's face down. If it's not a spell, most of the time it wouldn't be a spell, it'd be a trap because it was face down unless your opponent is baiting you out with certain cards. And then if it was a magic card, it would be destroyed. Then we have Remove Trap. Self-explanatory, you will destroy one face-up trap card on the field. It's actually quite good if it's a continuous trap. And then we have uh, one Axe of Despair, which I'm not actually... I think that's from Spell Rulers, I believe. I'm not too sure. Someone will tell me in the comment section, I'm sure. And then last but not least, the Legend of Blue Eyes Monster Reborn. Funny story, I actually got this off a friend of mine, and I, he was just like, yeah, you can have it. And I was like, okay, thank you. So that's all the spell cards. Going into the trap cards, we have one Mirror Force. This is all just to negate all battles. Uh, negate attack. Uh, we got Draining Shield. All these cards are self-explanatory. Do pause the video if you do wish to have a look at the old school artwork of these cards. Sakuretsu Armor. Uh, one um, Invasion of Chaos Magic Cylinders. This was from a limited edition set. Uh, it was like one of the promo cards, I believe. Uh, Waboku, I believe I'm saying that right. Uh, any damage inflicted to you will be reduced to zero this turn. The card is activated. That is actually a really good card still, especially in this current format too. Uh, Magical Hats, a very old school card. Uh, PSV, I don't actually know. It's like Psychic. I can't remember. Um, it is a very old school card. 
Uh, Seven Tools of the Bandit was one of the first ever counter traps. You'd pay a thousand of your life points to negate the activation of a trap card and destroy it. Obviously, no one plays that now because there's tons of other cards out there, especially like Red Reboot in this day and age. It's amazing to see how far cards have come in the current format and in Yu-Gi-Oh! in general over the years. And last but not least for the deck, uh, we are running one Call of the Haunted, also from the PSV set. And back in the day, you would select one monster from your graveyard, special summon it in face-up attack, and when this card is destroyed or removed from the field, the summon monster is destroyed also. If the summon monster is destroyed, that card will also go also. So it'd also be like... It's like a 50-50, it's back and forth. No matter what happens, if the monster leaves, the card would leave. If the card would leave, the monster would leave. So that is the deck profile. There was no extra deck. I just wanted to showcase my girlfriend's first ever deck profile for nostalgia. I really hope you boys and girls have found this somewhat uh, fun and something different for uh, this channel. And hopefully you can enjoy the nostalgia with me. And it's taken me back 15 years from the days I was in school. I remember the days I was in school where I used to have an elastic band wrapped around cards like this. I'm going to put these in sleeves after, don't worry. Uh, we used to have a, uh, elastic bands wrapped around the sleeves. And, uh, yeah, I used to just trade off my Yu-Gi-Oh cards for Pokemon cards, vice versa. And, uh, yeah, that is my deck profile. So, boys and girls, if you have enjoyed this deck profile, please smash that like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And please click the notification bell next to the subscriber button so you don't miss any uploads from me. And I also do live streaming lately, especially Crash Team Racing. That is the game of uh, June and July. So, thank you very much for watching. And Glenwyn is signing out. Peace, everyone.